Hey everyone, welcome back to the second episode of Design Breakdown, where we break down UI and UX design trends that are happening currently. Today we have four amazing new trends which are functional, which are being used by companies like Zomato, Apple and more. Of course, I'll give you a breakdown of why that UX design trend or UI design trend is useful to users and what sort of thinking goes behind such design decisions. Alright, so the first one is called floating comments and likes. Bubble-based UI interaction that's been showing up on platforms like YouTube and Instagram. Now the concept of the floating comments as you can see here is about engaging the users more while scrolling is happening. So a lot of users just like you guys might be just scrolling through content, skipping a lot of content that might be coming. To show that your friends, family, etc. who you follow like this or comment on this. Now these floating comments have the advantage of keeping the users engaged, nudging them to actually try and comment on this reel, giving this reel and creator more power as well as to keep you on the app for longer. So the longer you are on the app, the more engagement you do with an app, the better it will be for the application. There's a lower chance that you're going to leave the application soon or going to delete it. Now, if you try it out on your own Instagram, you'll be able to see a slight delay between these little pop-ups coming up. They want to make sure that your attention is right here on the video. That delay is almost necessary in order to avoid that confusion, in order to avoid taking your attention away from the actual content. Now, the similar thing has been done with the like buttons on YouTube shorts where instead of showing comments and people who are putting out stuff, which is again private, they're actually showcasing how these likes kind of pop up. Let me quickly show you a video. As you can see, this video or short is running and these likes are floating on the top. Again, playing absolutely no functional advantage. Such visual cues can help make the overall experience a little better and also promotes the creators at the end of the day, which is very important for this platform. Even though such elements do add delight, they do come with their own slight negative disadvantages, downfalls. Number one, you don't always want your comments to pop up on other people's feeds, reels, etc. So just because someone follows you or you follow them, you don't want them to know what kind of content you watch, what you're commenting, what your political views might be. This takes away that privacy aspect of such applications and it does drive users away from using such features. Also, this does create another layer of complexity. We also want to make sure that the user interface is less complex, fewer than seven or five elements at a time based on certain very important UX laws that I'm going to show up and pop up on screens. There are already some important aspects on the right. As you can see, this can add to the already existing complexity of the user interface. So keeping this in mind, a small tag or a small comment would have been much better than floating bubbles with multiple layers of complexity, animation, etc. This can actually be counterintuitive for Instagram in the long run. Overall, I'll give this new design trend a cool seven out of 10. It has its downsides, but I think it makes it very interactive and engaging for the users in general. The next trend is called the loading dot animations or the loading navigation animations. Now, these dot navigations are very common in most user interfaces, especially with slides and slideshows or carousel. This is Apple's implementation that I'm showing you. This is a new trend and here is where the new trend begins. Instead of just showing a normal navigation like so, I'll just show you how the normal navigation looks like. This is how a normal dot navigation looks like. There can be arrows at times, but sometimes it just you're swiping and these dots play from one to the other. That's it. Loading bars in between your navigation. Anytime a new slide shows up, there's a little loading animation that does pop up. Again, pretty cool that they have something like this implemented on Apple. Another addition to that is the pause button. So a lot of times you want to pause on a certain slide, see information that could be more text being displayed, which you want to read. So this implementation is actually very usable and almost everyone can understand this is the pause button right here it is similar to pausing in music, video, etc. So most users, even people who are not very tech savvy or friendly or don't use newer applications might still get used to something like this, which is a very good way of implementing such a design trend. Very similar to this, watch how YouTube does this. They have a very neat little implementation of this with the up next in five seconds. Similar to this, there are other platforms like Netflix who do the up next 
because of course they have to show the next video, next movie, whatever. And instead of doing the up next, they also have a loading indicator like this around the play or pause button. So there is an actionable element very close to the loading bar, which indicates that you should press it or is higher in affordance. That means it's easier to click, it's easier to understand that you have to click this. All right, let's take a little breather and let's get into user interface design apart from just functionality and experience. Now this UI design trend, also a graphic design trend, also an illustration trend is called displacement and noise. Displacement and noise is coming up big these days, especially with the new era of design plugins coming for your favorite tools like Canva, Figma, etc. Now these displacement effects are very commonly seen in wallpaper apps like nothing does this very well for their phones with their wallpaper packs coming even to websites, fashion websites, etc. because they like experimenting with visuals. And if you don't like such a form of displacement, there is the noise displacement, something that looks very similar to this where there are little specks of noise all over the place. To give you a better example, of course, here is a little poster from freejack.net. This poster showcases multiple design trends, but the one that we want to focus on is the actual nature of noise here. Distortion noise that has been added with the white background, which blends into the white in the background, makes it look very unique and interesting. There are some really cool plugins, I'll put them on the screen, which add this kind of noise inside Figma. So if you're a Figma user, you don't have to separately learn this. It's all available, ready-made. The next design trend I am very happy this is coming. This is an aspect of personalization. This next one is called highlight based experiences and sections. Things happening around you, aspects to showcase new features to users. A lot more stuff can be done with this new trend. First example of this is Zomato, which is a food delivery service in India showcasing the number of orders on a particular date, creating a building, a sense of community because this app already doesn't have any community related features. So having something showcasing what the public wants, needs, or is doing on the app can be interesting for the user to see. This is one of those features which we call good to have. Something which is just adding a sense of delight, is adding a sense of uniqueness to the app, differentiating you from the competition, but it's not adding any real value to the user. However, it is adding value to the business because it adds credibility to a company like Zomato, showcasing, oh my God, these are so many orders happening on a daily basis. The business is doing good, company is doing well. A lot of people are ordering from here, let's go there. This is something that already happens to us. If we see a crowded restaurant and an empty restaurant, we tend to go towards a crowded restaurant. I think it's pretty cool to see such aspects transferring from real life onto these apps. Now this also plays well with another application here again in India called Swiggy, very similar to Uber Eats and Zomato. Now they are showcasing rising stars under an explore section right here. So there is an entire section and navigatable page dedicated to users exploring new food outlets, trending stuff, etc. This is a good way to allow users to seek new restaurants, explore new restaurants. So not only is this helping the users discover new restaurants, but also restaurants being discovered on these apps are also catering to vendors, to third party restaurants, etc. This is again, something that you might even see with apps like Spotify or Apple Music by the end of the year, or it could just be something every month where they're showcasing what the user really likes. Another surprising contender is Uber. Uber is doing these cards at the bottom of every order screen. So if you order a cab, there are cards that pop up which showcase how many rides you've taken, how many rides people have taken near you or in your city, helping the big business succeed with these layers of personalization. All right guys, that was Design Breakdown episode two. If you wanna watch episode one, it will pop up somewhere here. So watch next. Uh, for sure. And of course, hit the like button if you like this series. I'll be making more of these videos in the coming weeks. And also let me know in the comments any design trend you want me to cover in the upcoming videos and whether there are any downsides to it, whether it's great or not. Let's see. I'll see you in the next video. Until next time, take care. God bless.